Welcome back to the Data Science Mentor, where I help you become and grow as a data scientist. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install and properly set up Python 3 on your machine. So let's get started. Before I proceed with the rest of this video, I want to note that this video is for Mac users with Mac OS Mojave or older. If you have Catalina or a newer Mac OS, then the process of installing and setting up Python 3 is a little different for you. So I have created a different version of this video for you, which you can find the link to in the description below. And now having said that, let's continue with the rest of this video. Last week, someone contacted me on LinkedIn and wanted to pick my brain about a project that he has been working on. But I was surprised when I found that he was still using Python 2. Now, Python 2 stopped being supported starting from this past January of 2020. And while your code would work and run, but if any security issues arise with any of the packages that you're using, this would compromise your project or solution because nobody will be working on fixing these issues. So if you're aspiring to become a data scientist, then there's no reason whatsoever for you to continue using Python 2. You should switch to Python 3 right now. While some people may recommend installing a platform like Anaconda and using the Python that's packaged with it because it comes with other standard Python libraries like NumPy, Pandas, and Matplotlib, I'm actually a big advocate of you setting up your own Python environment and using pip to install Python libraries and packages over Anaconda. Anaconda might be a good option if you'll be working on toy problems, but if you'll be doing serious data science work, building your own solutions and dashboards, then setting up your own Python environment is the right way to go. And that's what we'll be doing in this video. And just a final note before we get started, if you run into any error for some reason, Please don't worry, just comment and share the error message in the comments section below and I'll make sure to respond and help you out. Okay, and now I'm going to switch over to the computer and walk you through the process of setting up Python 3 on your machine. So let's do it. Alright, so we'll be using Terminal throughout the process of installing and setting up Python 3. Now if you haven't used Terminal before and it's not in the dock, if you go to Applications, then Utilities, you should find it there. So drag it and add it to the dock so you can access it easily as you'll be using it quite often, if not daily from now on. All right, so I'm just going to start terminal here and zoom in to make this larger. And now if I run Python, it should start the Python interpreter. And if you haven't used the interpreter before, you can actually run any Python code here. For example, you can run import statements like import numpy as mp you can run print statements like print hello python and literally any other python code but it's all in python 2 because it's the default so it's good to know that such interpreter exists in terminal as it can come in handy when you want to test something in python really quickly now another way to check what version of python is the default is to run python dash dash version and again, it shows that Python 2 is the default version. But if I run Python 3, I get command not found. Now we can get Python 3 through a package manager. There are two package managers for macOS. There is Macports and Homebrew. Since Homebrew is more user friendly, we will use it as a package manager to install Python 3. However, Homebrew requires a compiler to install its packages. With macOS, we can get the compiler by installing Xcode. Now, for those of you who don't know, Xcode is a development environment for macOS and has all the tools you would need to build anything on a Mac machine. Now, a shortcut to get the compiler to install Python 3 using Homebrew is by installing the command line developer tools. But I recommend that you install Xcode as a handful of other packages that you might need to install using Homebrew require the full Xcode and not just the command and line tools. So to install Xcode, normally you would go to the App Store, search for Xcode, and it should be the first result that's returned. So you'd click on it, click get, and install. But since we're running an older version of macOS, then if you try to install this version of Xcode in the App Store, you will get a message that you will need a newer version of macOS. 
So to get our hands on an older version of Xcode that's compatible with our Mac OS, we'll have to go to developer.apple.com, click account, and you will need to log in using your Apple ID. Now, if you don't have an Apple ID yet, you can create one by simply clicking here on the create yours now link and following the prompts and instructions. They're pretty straightforward, so you should be able to create one easily. Okay, once you create one, come back here and log in. When you log in for the first time, you might be presented with some information about data and privacy. If you do, click continue, and then you will need to accept the Apple developer agreement. So check the box and click submit. Now I have already done all this, and that's why I'm able to log in straight into my account. Once you're logged in, let's go back to the main page. So we'll click on the Apple developer logo. Click the develop tab here. Then click the Xcode icon. And then click resources on the top here. And then under additional downloads, you will find a link to command line tools and older versions of Xcode. So click on it. Now, if you have Mojave, then I think Xcode 10 is the one you should look for. If you have a macOS that's even older than that, then just look for the Xcode that's compatible with your macOS version. Well, for me, I have macOS Mojave on my computer, so I'm going to look for Xcode 10 to download. So I'll try to find it. And it looks like Xcode 10.3 was the latest, so I'm going to click on it and then click here to download the file. So save. And as you can see here, this is going to take about an hour to download. So I'm just going to let it download and we'll proceed as soon as it's done. All right, now that Xcode is all downloaded, we will have to unzip it, which might take a few minutes. And now that it's unzipped, we will run it accept the license agreement, and enter your password to start installing Xcode. And this will take another few minutes. And once Xcode is all installed, you should get this welcome screen. So let's close this. And now we need to install the command line developer tools next. So we'll have to go back here and find the command line tools version that's compatible with our Mac OS and Xcode. It should be this one here for my Mac OS Mojave and Xcode 10.3 that I just installed. So I'm going to click on it and click here to download the command line tools. So save. This should take a minute. And once the download is complete, we'll open the file. And then double click here to start the installation of the command line tools. We'll click continue, continue, and agree to the command line tools agreement. Then click install and type your password. And we will wait for the installation process to complete. Cool. And now that Xcode and the command line tools are installed, the next step is to install Homebrew, which is the package manager. So to install it, we'll have to go to the Homebrew website. So I'm going to switch back to my browser, open a new tab, and Google Homebrew. Click here. And on the landing page, we should find the command to run to install Homebrew. So I'm going to copy this. Switch back to Terminal paste and run now what's beautiful about the script that installs homebrew is that it tells you exactly what it will do before it does it and so it prompts you for confirmation throughout the installation process and so here it's asking for our permission to create these directories so let's hit enter and type your password and we'll just wait for the installation process to complete All right, and when you see this, you know that Homebrew has been successfully installed. And now the final step is to install Python. And we do that by running the command brew install Python. Now this will take a minute. And with this, the process of installing Python 3 is complete.
Now, one important thing to note here is that Homebrew has already created links so that Python points to Python 3 and so makes it the default when we run the Python command, but the links are placed in this directory. So we need to add this directory to the top of our path. Otherwise, the system Python 2 will continue to be invoked first. So what we will do, we will add an export command to our bash profile, updating our path with this directory to make sure that our path is properly set up every time we start terminal. Now, for those of you who don't know, bash profile is a hidden file that should sit in your home directory that would contain any bash commands or scripts that you would want to be executed or sourced every time you start terminal. Now, I'm already in my home directory, but if you're not, you navigate to it by running cd tilde. And now let's list the contents of our home directory to check if the hidden bash profile file exists. So we will run ls, but the command ls lists only the files that are not hidden. So to list the contents of our home directory, including the hidden files, we need to use the all or a option. And so we need to run ls a. And now all the files that have a dot at the beginning of their names are hidden files. So we have bash history, we have bash sessions, but we don't have bash profile. So let's create one. Now to create the bash profile file, we can use any editor like Emacs, Vim, or Nano. Now I prefer Emacs, but since some of you may not have it, I'll use Vim instead. So we will run vim.bash underscore profile and again the dot at the beginning here is to make the file hidden but before we run this command let me copy this directory and now run the command to create bash profile now vim has two modes insert mode and command mode insert mode lets you add modify or manipulate a file and command mode lets you run commands such as saving changes or quitting and exiting the file when you run the vim command to create or open a file you open the file in command mode and so you can't make any changes to the file so if i try to type something you will hear this sound indicating that I cannot manipulate the file. Now by pressing I, we switch to insert mode and now we can make changes to the file. So let's add an export command and set the path to be the directory that has the links to Python 3 first and then append it with the rest of the current path. Okay, we're done here. So now to save and exit, we switch to command mode by pressing escape and we type colon wq where w is to write and save the changes and q is to exit or quit the file. So hit enter. And now let's quit terminal for the changes to take effect and restart it. And now if we run Python, it should start the Python 3 interpreter. Isn't that cool? Let me exit this. And if we run Python, dash dash version it should confirm that python 3 is now the default now if we run ls dash a again we should now find bash profile in our home directory and if we run cat dot bash profile to print its content it should print the export command that we just added to it cool and finally let's run pip dash dash version to confirm that pip is properly configured and is linked to Python 3. Cool. And now any Python package we install through pip should be the version that's compatible with Python 3. And so now we have Python 3 installed and is the default version. We have pip properly configured and is linked to Python 3. And with this, you should have Python 3 all set up on your machine and pip working so that you can start installing all the Python libraries and packages that you think you will need to start working on projects. Now in the next video, I'll walk you through the process of setting up your GitHub account, which is the second tool that I mentioned in the video on how to get started with becoming a data scientist. So make sure to subscribe to get notified when I put up the next video. I'll see you next time.